Hey everyone, welcome back to KPU Brewing Channel. Today we're diving into the world of non-alcoholic beers. Whether you're looking to cut back on alcohol, stay sober, or simply enjoy the taste of the beer without the buzz, non-alcoholic options have come a long way in recent years. We'll look at major reasons which are driving the growth of this sector, explain challenges, and explore existing options for producing non-alcoholic beers. Finally, we'll walk you through a process of brewing a non-alcoholic beer. The non-alcoholic beer market has seen impressive growth, with demand surging as more consumers seek healthier, alcohol-free alternatives. In recent years, it's no longer a niche category, but a rapidly expanding segment. In North America, sales of non-alcoholic beers have risen dramatically, with reports showing double-digit growth year over year. It's not surprising, then, that many brewers have jumped on the bandwagon, expanding their offerings to meet the increasing demand. With the market expected to continue to grow, non-alcoholic beer is becoming a mainstream choice for beer lovers looking to enjoy the taste without the buzz. This shift is driven by a combination of health-conscious consumers, a growing trend of mindful drinking, and improvements in the quality and variety of non-alcoholic options. It's also worth noting that 75% of non-alcoholic beverage consumers also buy alcoholic products. Brewers should recognize that non-alcoholic beers aren't necessarily replacing alcoholic ones. Instead, consumers are incorporating both into a well-rounded lifestyle. This indicates a permanent change in consumer behavior rather than a short-term fad. Non-alcoholic products are here to stay well beyond dry January and sober October. Producing non-alcoholic beer that tastes just like regular beer is a challenging task for brewers due to several key factors tied to the brewing process and the role alcohol plays in the flavor profile of beer. First, alcohol contributes to the overall taste, mouthfeel, body, warmth and slight sweetness of beer. When you remove alcohol, it can leave a gap in the flavor, making the beer taste thin or less balanced. Finding the right combination of ingredients, brewing techniques and post-brewing processes to replicate the taste and feel of a traditional beer is a delicate task. However, with advances in brewing technology and experimentation, we're seeing more and more non-alcoholic beers that come close to mimicking the taste of their alcoholic counterparts. There are practically two groups of methods for producing non-alcoholic beers. Physical dealcoholization methods, which rely on removing alcohol after fermentation, and biological methods, which prevent alcohol from being formed in the first place. Both methods can result in a beer that lacks the complexity and depth of flavor that naturally occurs during traditional fermentation. The alcoholization methods include boiling, vacuum distillation, cross-flow filtration and reverse osmosis. The biggest challenge with some of these methods is that by removing alcohol, many of the other flavor active compounds are also being removed from the final product. Additionally, Alcohol acts as a solvent for certain aromatic compounds in beer, which are key to the beer's overall aroma and flavor complexity. Without alcohol, some of these subtle aromas can be lost or altered, leading to a less rounded and sometimes off-tasting beer. Biological methods are generally designed to produce less fermentable wort, which is then followed by limited or arrested fermentation or the use of special yeast strains that are unable to ferment some wort sugars. In regular beer, yeast ferments different sugars from malt to produce both alcohol and carbon dioxide, as well as many other flavor compounds which are all crucial to a beer's taste and texture. Brewing yeast strains are able to metabolize and ferment small sugars such as glucose, maltose and maltotriose, 
containing one, two, and three sugar molecules respectively. Non-fermentable sugars are medium and larger sugars containing four or more sugar molecules such as maltotetrose, maltopentose, or larger. Biological methods for producing non-alcoholic beers are designed to reduce dwarf fermentability by using mash conditions which would minimize the level of small fermentable sugars and maximize the level of medium and large unfermentable sugars in wort. By using special so-called maltose negative yeast strains which can only ferment the smallest sugars containing only one sugar molecule such as glucose and fructose, the alcohol production is further limited. It is also important to emphasize that non-alcoholic beers do not contain some of the typical barriers of the traditional beers that are important for consumer safety and product stability. The lack of alcohol and some other hurdles make non-alcoholic beers vulnerable to spoilage by foodborne pathogens. Therefore, when it comes to non-alcoholic beers, preservation methods such as the use of preservatives, sterile filtration, or pasteurization are necessary. Since dealcoholization methods require specialized and very expensive equipment, we are going to focus on producing non-alcoholic beers by using a combination of biological methods. Brewing non-alcoholic beers might be easier than you think. It can also be less expensive, it's much faster, and most importantly, it is fun to brew. So let's get started. For this non-alcoholic project, we are brewing a non-alcoholic pale ale on our small brewing system. The creation of this beer will require pasteurization to ensure food safety of the final product. In the absence of alcohol, we must rely on pH, the antimicrobial properties of hops, and pasteurization to ensure the food safety of the finished product. We have chosen a pale ale in the hopes that the style will hide or complement some of the characteristics features that can arise during the use of maltose negative yeast strains and the rested fermentation. We are adding both calcium chloride and calcium sulfate to our treated brewing water to target water profile with 60 ppm of calcium, 56 ppm of chloride and 67 ppm of sulfate ions. In this recipe we are using a small grain bill to get the original extract of only 6 degrees Plato. We are using 94% by weight of superior Pilsner malt which will provide a delicate malt character. Cara aroma and cara form malts are added at 2.5 and 3.5% by weight respectively for body, color and a slight caramel flavor. We have decided to do a few experimental mashing trials at various temperatures to compare the sugar profiles of different worts. The control mash was done at 68 degrees Celsius, with additional mashing trials done at 72, 74, 76 and 80 degrees Celsius. High pressure liquid chromatography sugar profile analysis has confirmed that mashing temperatures at or above 74 degrees Celsius have significantly reduced the concentration of all fermentable sugars. For the main mash trial, we are mashing in at 76 degrees Celsius. By mashing hot, beta amylase should be deactivated to prevent the formation of small fermentable sugars. We have also decided to shorten the mash time down to only 15 minutes to further reduce the formation of simple sugars. After that, the final mash out temperature was raised to 78 degrees Celsius before the start of the runoff.
After collecting our first runnings in the kettle, we are sparging with 80 degrees Celsius water. The runoff is stopped after collecting 45 liters of wort in the brew kettle. We are doing a 60 minute boil. At the start of the boil, cascade hops are added for bitterness. We are targeting 30 IBUs and 90% of the bitterness comes from cascade. Controlling the pH of wort and beer is very important. Since there will be little to no alcohol in the final product, there are less defenses in the beer against pathogens and spoilage microorganisms. The pH of kettle knockout wort should be checked just before the end of boil and adjusted to 4.5 prior to whirlpool. As a general guideline, 3 milliliters of lactic acid per 9 kilograms of grain can be used to reduce the wort pH by 0.1. Kettle knockout target is 42 liters of wort at 6 degrees Plato. As soon as the one hour boil is complete, it's time to start the whirlpool and add 36 grams of comet for some citrusy fruit notes. During the 15 minute whirlpool rest, we can set up our sanitized wort chiller. After cooling and transferring the worts from five small brew systems into our fermentation vessel, we have collected 200 liters of wort at 20 degrees Celsius. We are using Fermentis Saf Brew LA01 yeast. This is non-alcoholic yeast strain that has been specifically selected for the production of low and non-alcoholic beers. The yeast does not assimilate maltose and maltotriose, but assimilates simple sugars such as glucose and fructose. In order to check the sugar spectrum throughout fermentation, wort samples are collected at 0, 12, 24 and 48 hours of fermentation and are analyzed along with the packaged beer. The results have confirmed that the yeast is maltose negative and is only able to metabolize simple sugars. After two days of fermentation at 20 degrees Celsius, the temperature in the fermentation vessel is set to 1 degree Celsius and the beer is crash cooled. At the end of fermentation, final apparent extract was 5.2 degrees Plato and final alcohol content was just below 0.5% volume per volume. After seven days of aging at one degree Celsius, lactic acid was used to adjust the pH to four. Sheet filter was used to filter the beer as it is being transferred into the bright beer tank. Beer was forced carbonated to only 2.2 volumes of CO2 because of high levels of target pasteurization units in order to prevent canned bursting from happening. After packaging the beers into cans, all beer was pasteurized to 120 pasteurization units in our batch pasteurizer. Recommended PU targets for non-alcoholic beers are between 80 and 120. This non-alcohol pale ale is clear with a slight amber color. It is very refreshing and well-balanced beer with some good hop bitterness and citrusy aromas. Cheers! <laughs>